Juliana was surrounded by the smell of household chemicals, soapy foam, and her partner's usual singing. She worked together with Leslie as a dishwasher at the famous restaurant Bohemia, which was considered the favourite place for celebrating elite banquets. When she first found herself inside the richly decorated hall, she was afraid they would not even listen to her and accept her into the chic place. But the team turned out to be friendly and rejoiced at every new worthy employee. Juliana quickly learned everything she needed to know, but was advised not to take long breaks for lunch or get stuck on the phone. Look at how your little ones run around. Leslie nodded at five-year-old girl, who tried to do all the little errands she was given while her mother worked. You have a brisk little girl growing up, and you complained that she got a heavy cold. Oh, don't talk about it. She's well now, Juliana smiled, looking at her beloved daughter. How tired I am of this cold. It's all because of the dilapidated house we live in. The floor creaks, the roof leaks. There are gaps in the windows. I'm so tired, you can't imagine. Juliana did not notice how another hour of work had passed. Although the shifts were non-standard and unbearably heavy, she was satisfied with steady work and decent pay. Mr. Hurtado, the owner of the famous restaurant, turned out to be a wonderful person. Despite being a powerful businessman, he treated his subordinates politely and empathetically. He allowed Juliana to take hope with her because there was no one to look after her after kindergarten. Juliana raised her daughter alone, so she relied only on herself. The problems of a single mother were endless. She tried her best, but sometimes her nerves gave in. Juliana wanted to rent another place, but the money was flying away somewhere unknown. The salary was literally disappearing before her eyes, no matter how many shifts she worked per month. That evening, Bohemia hosted 350 people for a celebration of a powerful businessman's only daughter's wedding. He spared no expense in organising the celebration and decorating the hall. In the morning, Mr. Hurtado gathered the staff. The bride's family promised every employee a decent bonus if everything went according to the highest standard. We must cope. Do you hear me? Don't let me down. And good luck to all of us. Mr. Hurtado is not just a boss. He's gold, said Juliana with a smile. Where would I leave Hope if he didn't allow me to take her with me? She doesn't bother anyone. Look how hard she tries to please everyone. Good for her, Leslie laughed, rinsing another batch of dirty plates. Though you're single, but you're lucky with your daughter. Everything will work out. Don't be sad, you're only twenty-nine. You'll find someone who will love you. Trust me, it's easier with a man in daily life. I got married for the third time last winter. So, you'll definitely find your man. Juliana didn't like these words of conversations. After her husband's death three years ago, she didn't dare to think about another man. She was devoted to her love and didn't rush to open her heart to someone else. Juliana hadn't recovered from the tragedy yet, so she put all her efforts into raising hope. Don't talk to me about others, please. She turned to a surprised Leslie. I live for hope. She's my light in the window. I stand up every day just for her. No, affairs are not for me. Since fate has decreed it, I'll carry my cross. You're strange, Leslie smiled in response. Why suffer alone? For what? No one will appreciate your sacrifices, believe me. Better look at someone. You won't regret it. Oh, instead of a new wedding, I'd better think about how to make ends meet. It's not easy to raise a child alone. I didn't even imagine what I would have to face. Who would have thought that my Steve would disappear without a trace? The conversation about her deceased husband plunged Juliana into despair. She fell silent and focused on the plates in her hands. But Steve's smiling face appeared before her eyes again, 
when he had just started courting her. He always knew how to please her. Mummy, Mum! Hope approached Juliana with a happy smile and a beautiful and insanely expensive bouquet of exotic, delicate flowers, whose name no one in the kitchen workers knew. Look what I brought you! It's beautiful, isn't it? Juliana stared at the bouquet in shock. Her happy child had just led her to dismissal. Sweetie, hurry! Put this back where it belongs. We could not get in trouble for this. No, Mum. Nobody needs it. It was just lying there on the table. I watched it for a long time. Leslie looked at her colleague and knelt in front of the little girl. Sweetie, take the bouquet back quickly. So no one sees you. Your mum could get fired from her job. But I didn't mean to. Hope immediately became upset, and her big, naive eyes filled with tears. Mum, they won't fire you. I promise. I'll take it back right now. Hurry up, honey. The bride must throw the bouquet to her friends. No wedding is complete without it. If they notice you took it, it will be terrible. Juliana patted her daughter's back to calm her down and nudged her toward the hall. Juliana shouldn't be seen there, but a quick child running among the guests wouldn't attract much attention. Five minutes before that conversation, the groom, named George, noticed how the little girl grabbed the bouquet and rushed off somewhere. Overcoming the crowd of guests who constantly stopped him to congratulate him personally, he burst into the utility room. He saw the little girl saying something to the dishwasher and quickly went to them. As soon as Juliana noticed the groom, whom she hadn't been able to see carefully until now, she clutched her heart. She barely missed knocking over the stack of freshly washed dishes, which could have shattered into pieces. Steve? She said quietly, not believing her own eyes, and her face turned pale. Juliana, what's wrong? Leslie touched her on the shoulder. Did you see a ghost or something? The ghost of my late husband. This is Steve. The incident with the bouquet was immediately forgotten. Julia couldn't think of anything else but her husband standing in front of her. There couldn't be a mistake, because she would have recognised him after four years. Steve was standing in front of her, without a doubt. He may have gained a little weight, changed his hairstyle to the latest fashion, but her eyes didn't deceive her. Explain why this child is wandering around the hall during my wedding. George thundered loudly. And why is she stealing other people's things? It's outrageous. What kind of place is this? I was told it was the best in town. George's angry tone didn't scare Juliana. She reached out to him and touched his cheek, as if afraid the delusion would fade away as soon as she felt his skin under her fingers. Why are you shouting like that, my love? I knew you weren't dead. You couldn't leave us. You don't remember us at all? George immediately stepped back and stared at her, bewildered. He had no idea who this strange woman was or why she was crying. Lady, what are you talking about? I'm not your husband. I'm the groom, actually. I had a wedding today that this girl almost ruined. Steve, it's you, I know, I see it. Juliana persisted, speaking as if in a dream. Don't you recognise me? And hope she's your daughter. Don't pretend it's too cruel. Look me in the eyes. I'm your wife, Juliana. George sighed, completely confused by what was happening. Juliana began to scare him for real. He wanted to quickly return to the hall, to the bride, and forget everything he had seen in the kitchen. I'm sorry that something sad happened to you, but I don't remember either you or your daughter. My name is George. I grew up in an orphanage. We can't have anything in common, let alone children. Juliana seriously calmed down. Leslie tried to reason with her colleague, but to no avail. Don't ruin the wedding. Hope, darling, give the bouquet to the groom and apologise. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. 
the girl whispered, looking at the stern man. She hoped that Leslie's words wouldn't come true, and that her mum wouldn't get fired. Tears rolled down Juliana's cheeks again. She didn't believe it was a mistake. Her daughter had the right to know her father. She deserved to live in a full family. Why was Steve behaving like a stranger? Meanwhile, Mr. Hurtado entered the kitchen and noticed a guest. Usually, he didn't allow them to go into the utility room, but recognising the groom, he softened and put on a duty smile. What upset our dear groom here? Can I help you? He's not George, Juliana exclaimed, unable to hold back. He's Steve, Steve Hamilton, my husband. Why don't you admit it? Why are you silent like a lifeless statue? My heart is breaking because of your silence. Juliana stopped this circus immediately. Mr. Hurtado shouted at her, grabbing her by the shoulders. Calm down, otherwise I'll kick you out of here forever. Do you hear me? The owner of Bohemia's threats had no effect. There was nothing more important for Juliana right now than to get an explanation from her missing husband. This is my husband who disappeared four years ago. He was declared dead. Mr. Hurtado, I mourned for him all this year. The crying woman explained to her boss, and then she turned to the groom. Doesn't it hurt you to see us? How could you just disappear without explaining? You're a coward. That's who you are. Juliana yelled, not ashamed of anyone around. Mr. Hurtado stopped holding her. Is what she's saying true? He asked the groom. George looked offended. And you too? What a show! Do I have to show my passport to prove my name? That's it. I'm leaving. My guests and bride are waiting for me, while I have to endure this crazy woman's attacks. Fire her! She'll ruin your business! Watching George's retreating figure, Juliana, for the first time, considered the thought that he might not be Steve. Maybe George was his twin. Juliana, go wash up and get to work. Mr. Hurtado patted her on the shoulder, calming her down. I don't know what personal drama you have, but it's not the place for it at the moment. You've stopped the entire work. Stay after the banquet. We need to talk. A couple of hours later, Hope was sitting by Mr. Hurtado's office door. Through the glass door, she could see him gesturing and moving his lips frequently, and her mother, meanwhile, stood with her head down. She rarely said anything, admitting her guilt. Is it because of the bouquet? The girl asked Leslie. She stayed to watch over the girl while her mother was at the boss's office. No, dear, it's much more complicated. She comforted the child. These are adult matters. You wouldn't understand, but your mum will be punished for the bouquet as well. Remember, you should never take someone else's things, even if they're beautiful. Even if you really want to, you should never do it. I understand, Hope exclaimed, promising herself not to do it again. She was anxious about her mother. Juliana, don't let me down like that again. Can I rely on you? Mr. Hurtado asked one last time, packing his things into a leather briefcase. I'm loyal enough to my employees, but you still have to know your boundaries. It won't happen again. Thank you for your understanding. Goodbye, Mr. Hurtado. Julia sighed heavily, finding herself behind the door. She desperately wanted to be at home, take a bath, and relax her buzzing legs from tension. Mummy, I'm sorry that I put you in trouble. The upset daughter apologised. It was a tough day today. You're remorseful. That's enough punishment for you. Let's go buy something delicious instead. What do you want? Awesome. I want ice cream. Or cotton candy. Hope immediately perked up, skipping along. The 24-hour store in the residential area was small, but almost everything could be found in it. After wandering around for 15 minutes, Julia and Hope gathered the necessary groceries and put them on the counter. The tired salesman called out a sum to pay and stared at Juliana. 
clearly unhappy with their late arrival. Wait a minute, Juliana said as she put her hand in her pocket, where she had recently placed her earnings for the shift, and exclaimed loudly, "Oh God, where are they?" Upon looking into her pocket, she noticed a big hole that had gone unnoticed due to her daily work and household chores. Why is this happening to me? Did I really lose everything? She began to rummage through another pocket on her jacket, but there was no money to be found. She found only a few dollars with small change. The salesman looked at her and raised an eyebrow, waiting for the rest of the sum. Listen, he began rudely. Either pay or leave. Stop pretending that you lost your money, and you brought a child with you. Shame on you! We know scams like you. We've dealt with them. Initially, Juliana didn't understand why he was treating her like a beggar, but then she became offended. Who do you think I am? Did I ask you to give me the products for free? Why are you so rude? Because you're annoying with your antics. Get a job and stop bothering normal people. I'll say it again. Either pay or leave. I shop here almost every day. Your shift worker knows me. Juliana decided to resist. Her nerves were on edge that day, so she didn't stay silent. I'll take only an ice cream. I don't have more. Well, you're twisting it. Okay, give me your small change. The cashier said mockingly. Please change your tone and do your job properly," tiredly said Juliana. But the salesman kept speaking rudely and mockingly. "Don't tell me what to do, swindler!" "Mummy, why are you arguing again?" Hope started crying. She had already seen too many quarrels involving her mother. "Let's go home quickly, please." "See what you've done with your rudeness," Juliana got angry with the man. No compassion at all. What a rude man! She wiped her daughter's cheeks with her palm and kissed her on the nose. Don't cry, baby. Here is your ice cream. We're almost home. How did they even hire you here? Someone behind Juliana said. A tall, strong man, around thirty-five years old, appeared out of nowhere, threateningly looking at the confused salesman. What? Not enough thrills? You found yourself a victim, a woman and a child. What a brave man! Can you deal with equals, or are you just a coward? The stranger leaned over the cashier, bending over the counter. The latter stepped back, realizing he was in trouble. People told him many times that he would pay for his long tongue one day, and it was still unexpected. No, I didn't mean to mock her. We have all sorts of people coming here. He immediately started to apologize himself. Even his voice changed, becoming quiet and high pitched. Take it, the stranger said to Juliana and pointed to the purchases Juliana couldn't buy. I'm paying. Brad, that was the stranger's name, left the store with Hope and Juliana when the careless employee apologized to them. Thank you so much," Juliana smiled at her rescuer. "I'm so exhausted today that I don't have the energy to swear." And then this guy started mocking me. "Sir, thank you so much," Hope repeated after her mother, happy to see her smile again. Brad also smiled and offered to walk them home. Juliana usually only interacted with men for work and had not noticed any interest in her for a long time. Now, in the middle of the night, after experiencing a vulnerable situation, she was glad to meet someone strong and caring. "You have a beautiful daughter," Brad noted, watching as Hope jumped up and down with every step. "I always wanted a kid too, but it didn't work out." Juliana noticed the man's face darken. "I'm a widower. My wife and I were trying to have a baby, and we were thinking of adopting." Since it wasn't working out, and then during a routine checkup, we found out she had a tumor. I'm sorry for your loss, Brad. That's a big loss. I can understand. My husband, Juliana sighed. 
preparing to open up to a stranger despite what happened at Bohemia. I also lost my husband three years ago, so I'm coping on my own. Surprisingly, Juliana felt no worry but lightness. She rarely talked to anyone about Steve, and every time it ended in tears, so she preferred to remain silent. But Brad understood her, and he didn't need any extra words. He himself had experienced all the pain she had. Yes, it's always hard to talk about it out loud, the man admitted with a bitter smile. My friends advised me to talk more about the tragedy, to pour out my emotions, but that's nonsense. Yes, they don't understand, said Juliana sharply, and stopped at the entrance. Here we are. Do you want me to feed you dinner? We have meatballs. No, thank you. Rest, I won't bother you. Let's exchange phone numbers, just in case you need to calm down a salesman again. Juliana agreed. She had learned a little about him, only about the loss of his wife, but nevertheless she felt that she could trust this man. After having dinner with her daughter, Juliana put Hope to bed and stayed in the kitchen to clean up. Her thoughts involuntarily turned to the past. Juliana couldn't call her rural childhood happy. She didn't remember her early years well, but as she got older, her parents imposed more responsibilities on her. She was the oldest of three children, so there was always enough responsibility. Fourteen-year-old Juliana used to wake her brother and sister up for school, making breakfast for them. Get up, don't be lazy. I've already taken care of all the chores, and you're all lying around. Despite Juliana's huge help, her parents, for some reason, did not like her. They did not give her even a drop of the affection that they gave to the younger children. Sometimes Juliana went to her mother, hoping to get answers to troubling questions. Mum, she asked hesitantly, afraid of being rude, am I doing something wrong? I'm an obedient daughter. I study well. But you hug me so rarely. Don't fill your head with nonsense. Do your father and I treat you badly? What do you lack? The woman replied. You know we live modestly. There are three of you. We do everything possible to get everyone on their feet. No time for tenderness. But Juliana didn't believe that answer. She felt like a stranger in her own home. Mum, Dad, I want to talk to you about my future, said Juliana to her parents at the end of her senior year. I don't want to burden you. I'm going to live in the city. If I can, I'll go to college. If not, I'll find a job. You're so smart, smiled her father. You understand that we still have younger ones to raise. We'll help you with money in the beginning, but then you're on your own. To Juliana's disappointment, her rural education wasn't enough to enroll into college. She had to find a job quickly to avoid returning home in shame. Her parents rejoiced at her grown-up decision. It was impossible to let them down. Many shops were ready to hire the hard-working girl, even without experience. She got along easily with people and had knowledge of gardening, so she decided to try herself as a salesperson at the flower shop. Don't be afraid, Melanie, her new colleague, encouraged her. I'll teach you everything. Our boss is strict, but she rarely shows up. I'll do my best not to disappoint you, Juliana modestly smiled. Despite her simple appearance, Juliana was far from being a foolish country girl. She quickly caught on and settled into the shop, becoming popular with regular customers. Often, wealthy men would spoil Juliana with small gifts, such as sweets or inexpensive trinkets. But she refused them, afraid of those who looked down upon her, and her boss did not encourage flirting with clients. One day, a handsome young man entered the flower shop and asked Juliana, Miss, can you tell me how to win a beauty's heart? Juliana was taken aback, but the handsome stranger's intense gaze made her answer honestly. With care, you can't replace sincere concern and a desire to protect your beloved 
with anything. The man was amused by her answer. He took off his jacket and draped it over Juliana's shoulders. Because of the low temperature, which was maintained in the flower pavilion, she often caught a cold. Don't take it off, the stranger said without a hint of a smile. Let it always keep you warm. Thus, she met Steve. Because of his own business, he could afford to woo beautifully, quickly turning a girl's head. Everything is moving so quickly, I can't keep up with it, Juliana exclaimed, sitting in a boat during a romantic walk. They were surrounded only by quiet nature and the chirping of insects. Steve moved closer and offered her a snack. If you agree to be with me, he promised, I'll always take care of you. You won't regret it if you give me a chance. For the first time, Juliana experienced such feelings. She constantly felt uplifted and wanted to be with her beloved every minute. Steve was attentive and always listened to her wishes. After experiencing a deprived childhood, Juliana was surrounded by the boundless love and care that she had so longed for. She gave herself over to these crazy feelings without hesitation. The couple got married just five months later. Juliana felt like the heroine of a romantic movie with a happy ending. She believed that ahead of her was a whole life, hand in hand with Steve, whom she loved so much. You have such a beautiful surname. Can I take it? asked Steve before the wedding. Juliana was surprised by his question. Why, usually it's the opposite, she said, kissing him on the nose. I know, but I'm not a supporter of prejudices. Your surname sounds great. Let's give our children a sonorous name. What do you think? You're right. I didn't even think about it. Let it be so. Juliana readily agreed. At first, Juliana was glad about her husband's wealth and spent his money since he earned well. However, Steve never discussed his business with her. Darling, are you some kind of spy? Why don't you ever talk about your business with me? And why don't your friends or colleagues come to us? Why should my dear wife know about it? There are men's business, you understand? Just trust me, live for your pleasure. Steve evaded the questions and didn't tell her anything. Several attempts to talk to her husband were unsuccessful. Juliana realized that she shouldn't know about Steve's activities. What if he is a secret agent? What if his duty obliges him to keep information, even from his closest relatives? Respecting her husband and trusting him totally, Juliana calmed down and stopped asking him questions. Juliana, you're just glowing. Former colleague Melanie chattered. You've blossomed after getting married. Expensive clothes, jewellery, even holding yourself differently. Thank you, my dear, Juliana answered shyly. I've noticed it myself, too. Money works wonders. Steve does everything, so that I don't need anything. But I'll tell you the secret of my radiance. We're expecting a baby. The young woman admitted with a happy smile. Oh, how wonderful! Congratulations! Let the baby develop healthily, without any trouble, Melanie said, carefully hugging Juliana and putting her hand on her unnoticed little belly. Steve surrounded his wife with care, anticipating all her desires. Although he often stayed at work and could leave on a business trip for several days, but he always stayed in touch. As for her parents, Juliana rarely communicated with them. They came to the wedding, but didn't even stay for the night. Steve rented them a good room in a hotel. However, the spouses returned to their younger children, justifying to themselves that they had household chores that couldn't be left unattended. After the birth of Little Hope, Steve seemed to have changed. Juliana noticed some strangeness in him that alarmed her. Honey, what's going on? She couldn't stand it when her husband once again jumped out of the room, answering the phone. Everything's fine, he always answered, but the tone and secrecy didn't suit Juliana. Steve started checking the windows 
and the front door before bed and was often lost in thought. One day he got worried when their neighbours knocked on their door. On the street he started looking around. What's going on? Juliana pestered him, beginning to worry about her and Hope's safety. Don't worry, I just became like this after the birth of our daughter. I'm a father, your protector. I should always be on alert to protect you from any surprise. But Juliana noticed that her husband was irritated by her persistence. Why do you keep asking? Don't you have enough problems? Take care of the child instead. You should improve as a mother. Steve's words hurt Juliana. She didn't expect him to be so harsh and unfair. She always tried to keep their home in order, even when she didn't sleep all night because of their daughter's colic. Juliana stopped bothering her husband, but she kept watching him. She felt in her heart that Steve was scared, but he didn't want to share it with her. As a good wife, she should have been his support and confidant, but he didn't see it that way. He preferred to solve everything himself. At first, she liked that about him, but if they were in danger, she had the right to know and prepare for any situation. Steve, however, stubbornly remained silent, assuring her that there was nothing to worry about. Then, one day, he disappeared forever. The frightened Juliana's statement was only accepted by persistent police officers three days later. Mom, I understand that you're worried. The officer comforted her. But there are rules. We can't drop everything to search for your husband just because he didn't come home. Maybe he decided to take an unplanned vacation. He's tired of family life. Your little daughter is probably annoying him. I don't need your assumptions. I need action. What if my husband is already lying somewhere injured? What if he needs help? We're wasting precious time. If something has happened to him and you haven't acted, please calm down. The search will not begin until it is appropriate. Go home and rest. Put the little one to bed. Your husband will be found. This happens often mistresses and such. But Juliana was right. Something bad had happened to Steve. As soon as the police started searching, they found his car in a strip of forest on the second day. It was in terrible condition. Abandoned, dented, windows broken, headlights shattered. Oh my God! Juliana screamed when she was told about the blood in the car. Is it Steve's blood? Have you found out what happened to him? Why would anyone do this? They're not human. They're beasts. The examination is still pending. The results will be available in four days. For now, I can only advise you to try not to think of the worst. Do you have any relatives in the city? Ask them to come and stay with you, advised the officer, who was now convinced that Steve's life was in danger. If your husband is wealthy, then he may have been kidnapped. Sooner or later, they will contact you and demand a ransom. Keep your phone with you. If there is any news, contact us immediately. From that moment on, Juliana was often called in for questioning. In case of a spouse's death or disappearance, their other half was the first to be suspected. However, no motive or evidence was found against Juliana. So they dismissed this theory, leaving the woman to grieve her loss. And now, five years after those sad events, Juliana was excited by meeting George at Bohemia. She could hardly sleep until morning. Memories of their acquaintance and her closeness with Steve deprived her of sleep. The next day, Juliana headed to work again, taking her daughter with her. That day, they were once again holding a grand banquet, and she was happy that work would help her distract herself from sad thoughts. Concentration on work always helped. Walking from the bus stop to the gates of Bohemia, Juliana became alert, realising that the inconspicuous car was slowly following them all the time. The woman was frightened to the core. She remembered the times 
when Steve looked back at every car like this, afraid that he would be caught off guard. The alarm grew, taking her back to those uneasy weeks. Hope, my sunshine, Juliana sat down in front of her daughter. Run inside and find Leslie. Tell her to watch over you. And where are you going? Can I come with you? Her daughter immediately perked up. No, my dear, not today. I have urgent business, and it's not for children. Juliana said sternly, knowing how to influence her child. Will you be back soon? I'll wait for you. Of course, I'll be there in ten minutes. Just sit in one place and don't get in the way of the adults. Remember what happened yesterday. That's right. Wait for me calmly. Seeing Hope enter the restaurant, Juliana turned the corner and hid. She saw a tall man get out of the car. The hood hid his face, but the stranger headed towards the turn where the woman had just disappeared. Wanting to uncover the identity of her pursuer, Juliana quickly ran around the building to catch up with him from behind and not allow him to escape. Hearing her fast footsteps behind him, the man turned around. Brad! Juliana gasped, stopping in her tracks. Why are you here? Why are you following me? The woman immediately grew angry. The adrenaline pumping through her veins made her bolder and firmer. Her gaze showed that she wouldn't back down without answers to her pressing questions. Brad's face wasn't hostile. He seemed just as friendly and calm as he had during their nighttime meeting. She didn't feel any threats from him. Hello, Juliana, don't be afraid. I'm not dangerous to you. Then explain what's going on. Why are you following us? So, yesterday's meeting wasn't a coincidence, right? Answer, Brad. Or are you not, Brad? Why do you need this? Juliana noticed that she had caught the man off guard with her actions and was proud of herself. Now she had the advantage. He couldn't evade the truth. And don't you dare lie to me. I'll notice it. Well, you're a smart woman, he replied calmly. I suggest we discuss everything in a more pleasant place. But you have your work shift ahead. I want to hear everything now. We have ten minutes. Juliana stood her ground, staring unwaveringly. The thing is, I used to be a police officer. Now I work as a private detective. I have my own agency. It's just business. And I'm hunting for that same George, your husband's alleged twin. Surprise was easily readable on Juliana's face. Why do you need him? Is he involved in something? Tell me. Is he really not familiar with my Steve? If he knows where my husband is, why didn't he say so yesterday? I had such a tantrum, I could have lost my job, and he just kept silent. No sympathy at all. He definitely knew who I was, but behaved so coldly. I suspect there is no George or Steve. It's the same fraudster, a marriage swindler. What? The woman protested. Why Steve isn't like that. He loved me. We had a family. Would he start a real family? That's ridiculous. Steve adored Hope. He couldn't live without her. You don't know what you're talking about. He couldn't have become a criminal. He loved us and did everything for the good of the family. He couldn't have been such an excellent actor and then just disappeared from his own child's life. Brad looked sympathetically at the desperate woman. I am sorry to say this, but you have no idea what these scoundrels are capable of doing for their own benefit. They're dangerous. Calculating people are capable of great cruelty. Juliana leaned against the wall, dizzy from the sudden feeling. Over the years that she had been waiting for her husband's return, the woman had considered various versions of what had happened. She blamed Steve's business for everything. It always seemed suspicious. And now she's found out another terrible version. Are you all right? Brad took her shoulders and looked into her eyes. Breathe calmly, Juliana. Breathe. That's it. Clever girl, don't panic. 
You're holding up well, he said with a light smile. Your spouse is a real pro. He's fooled many women, including me, using different names and surnames, while at the same time cleaning out the bank accounts of his wealthy wives. He takes out loans in their names. That's how he lives. He always has money to charm his next victim. But why did Steve need me? My parents are poor country workers. You've probably figured that out by now. Is there any profit from me? I'm not the daughter of a banker or a politician. You don't know everything about yourself, replied Brad, deciding to reveal the whole truth. I was hired by an influential person to keep an eye on you. You have no idea how protected you are. Oh, really? Juliana couldn't help but laugh irritably. Dangerous and powerful dishwasher woman from a restaurant. Are you kidding me? Just tell me who sent you to me. I want to meet him. No problem. The man immediately agreed. But later. It's time for you to go now or you'll be late. I'll call you when I arrange the meeting. This conversation excited Juliana. She had many questions in her head that she wanted to ask right now, but she had to wait. And a couple of days later, Brad called. It's time to visit my new employer. I'll drive you myself, but it will be a long drive, he said. Juliana felt nervous all the hours before the upcoming meeting. She didn't know what to expect or how to react. All her life, someone knew more about her than she did. Couldn't such a situation be frightening? Are you nervous? Brad asked quietly, skillfully driving the car through busy city streets. Is it that obvious? Juliana shuddered from his close attention. I don't know how everything will end, she admitted, and the man gently touched her hand in a sign of support. Believe me, everything will be much better than you imagine. This meeting will bring you peace. By the way, here we are. The car approached a large house, nestled among tall trees. The territory was surrounded by a high fence, which didn't allow anyone to peek inside. Wow! Hope exclaimed. Is this a fairy tale house? Who lives here? You'll find out soon, Brad smiled, parked the car, and they all headed towards the house. The territory seemed overgrown with neglected vegetation. Flowers grew on their own, surrounded by weeds and ivy, as if they were wild. The paths to the benches and the old fountain were also overgrown long ago. Brad walked ahead. Juliana was sure. He had been here more than once, so he knew his way around. Please come in. He opened the heavy entrance door and let Hope and Juliana go first. The hallway seemed dark and mysterious. Brad led them into a cosy living room with old furniture. It smelled of expensive man perfume. And as soon as Juliana and her daughter entered the room, an elderly stranger stood up from his chair. Finally, exclaimed the owner moving forward. Hello, Juliana. Hello, Hope. He ran his hand through the girl's hair, causing her to blush and press against her mother. Please introduce yourself. Juliana immediately got down to business. I'm concerned about the surveillance by Brad, and I want to know what's going on. Sit down, dear. Sit down. The elderly man pointed to the dark sofa with oriental ornaments. My name is Peter Davis, and I am your father, Juliana. This is ridiculous. I know my parents. Those people just raised you at my request, my dear. But there is no blood relationship between you. So, what made you contact me now? When you were born, I was already firmly established. My business was growing. Only my rise came at an uneasy time. Many of the companions I started with went over to the criminal side. I didn't want to dirty my hands and be afraid all my life. But those who were my faithful comrades turned into my bitterest enemies. I had a choice. Either I was with them 
or I was going to jail on a case they fabricated. I tried to resist, and your mother paid the price for my ignorance. Mr. Davis stopped and was silent for a moment, remembering the past was difficult for him. Your mother died in an arranged accident, but I knew who was behind it. I had huge material on all of them. After your mother's murder, I gave everything to the police, and it became a high-profile case. After that, I disappeared from the country because I knew their cronies would come after me for revenge. And the only revenge for them was my and your deaths. Believe me, my daughter, I didn't want to leave you at the mercy of fate. But I had no choice. I gave you to a poor family and hid you so that no one knew you were my little heiress. After these events, I hid outside the country for a long time. The constant fear of being found, the separation from you, seriously undermined my health. Money doesn't solve everything, although it's considered otherwise. My illness is incurable, and I wanted to die in my homeland among loved ones. And you, my daughter, and Hope, are the only relatives I have. In addition, all my enemies are already dead. Some died in prison, some died in a struggle for power and money. And now I am so happy to see my granddaughter with my own eyes. I never forgot about you. I helped as much as I could. But I had to do it very secretly. If I had been caught, I and you wouldn't have been left alive. Juliana was overwhelmed with conflicting emotions. On the one hand, she was glad to have found her biological father, who happened to take care of her from the side. She always felt neglected by her mother and father, and now she found out why. On the other hand, she was angry that such an influential person as her father allowed her to get involved with the fraudster Steve. So... I'm your only heir, me and Hope, and you're not afraid of my selfish plans after this confession? Mr. Davis laughed good-naturedly. Daughter, even if you were to make selfish plans, I would still give you everything I have. That's why I dared to appear in your life, and hope to earn at least a little of your participation. I lived for many years without a family, woke up fearing nightmares. I was worried that my child was growing up in not superb conditions. But please don't deprive me of my last joy of meeting you. Please, let me communicate with Hope. See her laughing while I still can. Juliana couldn't think of everything at once and decided to focus on the situation with Steve. She wanted to know what Brad had found out about him. Excuse me, Juliana turned to the maid. Who brought a tray of tea? Could you show my daughter this fairy tale house? She had been dreaming about it since the first minute of our visit. Of course, with pleasure. The woman replied softly and took the girl by the hand. Yay, Mummy, I will come back and tell you everything. Okay, sweetie, behave and don't make me worry about you. All right, Mum, I won't. She turned to her companion immediately. How many rooms are there here? Are there any secret passages? There should be, in every castle. So what do we know about my husband? Brad, are you certain that Steve is George from the wedding? Maybe they're twins. But if he is a real criminal, you must have facts, evidence, asked Juliana, trying to control her emotions. If he is a marriage swindler, he must answer for it. We need to find out everything and prevent new crimes. We know that he married a new victim and she is rich. We need to hurry before another woman is left with a broken heart and a child in her arms. But if I didn't know about my real father, inheritance, how did my husband find out about it? I'm not sure, Brad replied. I've been following Steve for not so long, but he already deceived more than one woman. 
you were the first. We need to press on him somehow, forcing him to confess, because it will be difficult to prosecute him in all cases. Suddenly, Juliana had an idea. I know who can help us, but I don't remember anything except the name. During my pregnancy with Hope, I saw Steve in a cafe with some man. I was walking from the doctor and noticed them through the glass window. When I appeared in front of their table, Steve was clearly scared. He started to stutter and explain everything incoherently. The man was much older. I hadn't seen him before, and Steve didn't invite him to the wedding. He introduced him as a teacher. His name was Larry, and I remember his appearance vaguely. Only for a teacher, he was too sloppy. It was difficult to imagine him in front of students at the lectern, but with a beer is perfect. I think I caught them off guard. Steve rarely introduced me to anyone, and it was evident that he didn't want to introduce me to this acquaintance of his. Could they be involved in something? It's quite possible, Mr. Davis nodded. He had no doubt that a skilled detective like Brad could get to the truth. Brad immediately thought about how to identify the stranger. I can try to find video recordings from that cafe or other places located nearby. The chances of success are almost zero. A lot of time has passed. Most security posts do not keep records for more than a few months, and here it's been almost five years. But luck smiled to Brad. He managed to recognize Steve's companion, who turned out to be his own father. Larry had two terms for fraud. Clark, as Steve was called in the birth certificate, had more attractiveness than his father, and Larry decided to take advantage of this to teach the boy to earn a living. But by this time, Larry was practically a lowlife who lived in a shack and did nothing but drink and sleep. Tell me everything, or you'll go for complicity. Brad pressed him against the wall, trying to get a confession. I taught him everything, and he left me," complained the drunken man to Brad. "He bathes in the money of his rich wives, but this ungrateful son forgot about his father. I'll tell you everything if you give me some money." Brad nodded in agreement, and Larry started speaking. "I'm the one who convinced my son to do scams. I was working on Mr. Davis, and then he disappeared somewhere, but I had information about his daughter. The heiress grew up." So I sent Clark to her. I thought Mr. Davis would show up at the wedding. My son would become rich too, but nothing happened. Clark even got the girl pregnant, and her father still didn't show up. My son realized he had miscalculated, so he arranged his disappearance and then switched to another woman. That's it. Now give me my money for information. With the gathered facts and evidence, Brad went to the police. To explain the case to his old comrades, Clark was caught rapidly, revealing his hiding place and several documents with different names, including a passport for Steve Hamilton. His new wife was horrified, imagining what damage her reputation and family life could have suffered by marrying such a despicable person. Everything's behind us, daughter. Mr. Davis comforted Juliana. In the past few months, Juliana had been visiting her father frequently. Deep down, she forgave him, because her father couldn't do otherwise. If he had the opportunity, he would have raised her himself and given her a different life. Now she had to accept her fate and be happy that everything had been resolved. Despite her anger and resentment towards her ex-husband, Juliana never regretted the birth of Hope. Her daughter was her greatest joy and blessing. Meanwhile, Mr. Davis felt really bad. He was getting worse day by day, although numerous caregivers and doctors did everything to ease his suffering. I feel much better when I see your face," he admitted, holding his daughter's hand. Juliana accepted his offer and moved into his house with Hope. Juliana often cried when she was alone. She was about to lose another close person, and they had so little time. Brad tried to comfort her. The man could not remain indifferent to the fate of his client. He often visited her 
and brightened her days with some news. In a short time, Brad became her close friend and reliable supporter. He was there for her whenever she needed him, spent time with Hope, and asked for nothing in return. The feeling of mutual affection grew with immense force and was no longer a secret. Daddy, I can't bear it! Juliana wept when Mr. Davis was already on the brink. He could hardly move his tongue, and his family did not leave his side. Everyone was afraid of not having time to say goodbye. Hope sat calmly, feeling her grandfather's hand in her hair. She was also sad because her mother cried so much and her grandfather was in pain. You can do it, my dear. We are the same kind. Hold on to Brad. He is reliable. I'm very happy for you. We didn't tell you before. We didn't want to worry you. The daughter said through tears, unwilling to let go of her father. She wanted to keep him, to live together for at least a few more hours or days. I bless you, Brad. Take care of them. Now you are the head of the family. Many people came to accompany Mr. Davis on his last journey. Juliana did not know most of the guests, but accepted their sincere condolences. It took time before she could recover from the loss. After the will was announced, Juliana realized that now she had a sea of opportunities. Mr. Davis bequeathed to his daughter all his fortune, real estate and shares. We can live without working for our whole lives, she said, hugging her fiancé. We can have the wedding in space. What a fantasy, Brad laughed. Let's think of something more ordinary. What about going to the islands and renting a beautiful house with a view of the beach? We will live in peace. There are many activities for children in such places. Hope will love it. Now, my ex-boyfriend would strangle himself with resentment, knowing how much money is in my account. Juliana giggled, imagining Clark's annoyance. Yes? He would try his best to make your head spin. And he doesn't give up, writing to you from prison, hoping to come back. I'm even a little jealous. Brad teased, kissing his bride on the lips. Too late. I'm already booked by the best man in the world. The couple invited only their closest friends, who had supported them through difficult times, and were sincerely happy for their happiness. Toasts, music, and a river were forever preserved in the hearts of the newlyweds. Dressed up, Hope sat between Juliana and Brad, shining with happiness. Now you will definitely be happy, Mum, the girl said, and joined the hands of her mother and stepfather. Beautiful wedding rings shimmered on their fingers.